the story of John Pierpont Morgan, the financier who was born in Hartford, Connecticut in 1837. His father's business took the family to Boston, and then, three years later, to England, where the elder Morgan became the partner of George Peabody of Massachusetts, head of a great mercantile banking house. The boy's health began to fail. The London climate was too severe for him, so he was sent to Germany for his health and education. It was in Germany at Gottingen University that the science of mathematics first interested young Morgan, so he specialized in the course. Our story opens at a beer garden in the old Prussian town. Morgan and his fellow students are just finishing a rousing song. Not so bad after all, Morgan. Look, he has attracted the Herr Professor. Oh, oh Professor Young. Uh, well, boys, from the noise, I think that you are enjoying yourself, man. <laughs> you hear, Morgan? Hey, Joseph calls it noise. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Herr Professor. We are trying to be happy, even though we are soon to lose Herr Morgan. Oh, I don't believe him, Herr Joseph. They're really glad to get rid of me. No. We really will miss you, son. You have been an excellent scholar. Oh, that's kind of you, Joseph. Particularly since you are my mathematics professor. Yeah. Do you know that you have the keenest mathematical brains I have ever known? What? I have? Yeah. Well, I guess that'll come in handy in the mercantile banking business. Your brain and character will carry you far, John. No matter what business you follow. Well, I hope so, Herr Joseph. You know, I like mathematics. And since majoring in the course here at Cottonton, I'm going to give it a try when I take a position with my father and Mr. Peabody. Oh, what is finance, after all, but mathematics? Finance? Uh, a good deal more than mathematics, my boy. Why don't you stay on here at the university? But stay here? Yeah. Well, why? What future is there here for? I would make you my assistant, John. Once when I resign, you would become professor of mathematics at Cottington University. Ah, there are far worse futures, my young friend. <laughs> and greater. Oh, no, Herr Joseph. I'm going into business in America. And then I'll do some multiplying on my own account. Morgan was 19 when he entered his father's banking firm in 1856. But he made good every boast. Finance was his talent. And in 1860, he opened an office on Wall Street as American factor for the George Peabody Company. Already he had surmounted the panic of 1857 and learned many valuable lessons. John Pierpont Morgan was riding on the high crest of success. In 1861, he met and fell in love with Amelia Sturgis. He had many rivals for her hand, but thought to conquer them as he had business rivals. One evening, he called at her home. Amelia, my darling. Yes, John? I saw the doctor leaving as I came in. Your mother was weeping. Is she ill? Heart sick, perhaps, John, but, but not ill in the sense you mean. Oh, what's wrong, then? Why was the doctor here? Because of me. You? Oh, you're not sick, Amelia. You've been staying in too much of late, that's all. Oh, what you need is a good time. I'm afraid my good times are over for a while. Amelia, if you're evading me because of some other man, I warn you, I won't give you up so easily. I know, but you must forget me. I'm going abroad very soon. Well, you're going... Oh, so there is another man. No, no, you, you don't understand... <coughs> oh, Amelia, my dear. I, I'm very sick, John. I have been for a long time. That's why I refused your invitations of late. You see, I'd hoped, well, we all hoped that... Oh, Amelia, my darling, forgive me. How can I? What can I... I'm going with you. But you can't. What of your business? Amelia, I have found something more important to me than business. Will you... Would you marry me? Oh, no, no, not now. Oh, please. I beg of you. John, my darling. Why, I've never seen you like this before. You've seen me as everyone else sees me. Gruff, self-sufficient. But that isn't really me, Amelia. I love you more than anything else in the world. When nothing I've ever done or ever hoped to do would be important without you. Oh, you make it difficult. Don't refuse. Give me the privilege I ask. I will. I do love you, John. I will marry you.
John Pierpont Morgan married Amelia in Paris in the late summer of 1861, only to lose his bride the following spring. Then, he plunged back into business, returning to an America in the throes of a civil war. The Morgans were strong union sympathizers. European bankers refused to risk a dollar in American investments, but John and his father kept the North's credit good. After the first battle of Bull Run, the young man installed in his office the first private telegraph wire on Wall Street, thus keeping in constant touch with the movements of the army. Oh, Smith, why doesn't he answer? Bunnell's on the battlefield, Mr. Morgan, and Lieutenant General Grant is probably keeping him busy. He'll send us word the moment he has anything important. Mm, something should happen soon. The last word we had was that Lee's army was heading north towards Gettysburg. Yes, uh, Colonel Roebling sighted it from an army balloon. Smith, I believe the crucial moment has arrived. The time for the battle that's going to decide who shall win the war. Why, you've never had any doubt as to which side would win, Mr. Morgan. The North must win. When it does, and if we work hard, America will be the richest country in the world. If the North wins, you and your father and Mr. Peabody will be largely responsible. When your company advanced England a protection fund of a million pounds to stop them from building Confederate privateers, why, the effect throughout the oh, world careful, was... careful, Smith. That transaction must be kept secret. Few know about it except President Lincoln and the British and American authorities involved. Yes, I know that, sir. But someday the world will know. And I believe that that payment will be someday revealed as the thing that turned the tide of the Civil War. And that's the thing on which the company is pinning its faith. And the minute word comes from the battlefield... And if it's the right word, we stand to make... That's now, sir. What's he saying? Battle. Started. Gettysburg. Terrific. Combat. I knew it, Smith. This is it. Union fighters. Wait. North. Victorious. At Gettysburg. I knew it. It's the end, Smith. The Confederacy will never recover from such a crushing defeat. But it's just the beginning for America. No North, no South, but one whole united country. And J. Pierpont Morgan is going to grow with that country. to his prediction, J. Pierpont Morgan built a fortune that eventually made him dictator of his country and everything save title. Railroads, coal, and steel were the rungs on his ladder of success. In 1895 and again in 1907, he brought his country safely through bankruptcy and panic by freely filling the treasury from his own coffers. And no one could overthrow his reign until Theodore Roosevelt came to the president's chair. Believing that the great bankers were hindering the progress of America, Roosevelt struck a blow at the heart of Wall Street through the Sherman Antitrust Act. The Supreme Court decided in favor of the president, and from then on, the tide turned. Morgan, the Alexander of American finance, had appeared in the single hour that had room for him and his methods. But now, the day of the aristocrat was past. You're a strange man, Mr. Morgan. 
During all our battles, I've always pictured you as a man with a dollar mark for a heart and ticker tape running through his veins instead of blood. <laughs> <laughs> and my liking for canaries changes your opinion? That and your collection of paintings and the fact, Mr. Morgan, that you've done more to combat the white plague than anyone else. Well, that was the least I could do, considering my first wife. I have here a record of your career, Mr. Morgan. A very detailed record, I presume. I'm not speaking of the business angle. I dealt with that as I saw fit. As a result, we are, shall we say, friendly enemies. These papers concern your charities. Charities? A million-dollar plot of ground toward the building of a hospital in New York, and financing its erection as well. Here, I note that you gave five million dollars to the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. Here, a million to the Harvard Medical School, and half a million to the Trades Training School, and similar amounts to various museums. <laughs> well, Mr. President, you have been reading about me. <laughs> it's my business to know about you, Mr. Morgan. Opposed as we've been in most things, I must admit that there is nothing mean or small in your nature. I admire you. And as president, I wish to thank you on behalf of the United States for your philanthropies. Thank me? What I have done for my country is nothing to what she's done for me. But maybe I have been wrong in some things, Mr. President. But there's one thing I've never been wrong about. The future of America. Thus, J. Pierpont Morgan, the great banker, the greatest organizer, became the greatest master of capital of his time. He took what he wanted, but returned it with the proverbial hundredfold. We thus pay homage to J. Pierpont Morgan, financier, adventurer, philanthropist, captain of industry. <laughs> <laughs> 